My guest this week is Mrs. Margaret McMahon from the Pines Antique Shop, which is west of Ames. And we're going to talk this week about antique furniture. Today we're going to concentrate on the country furniture, and most of this is pine furniture. And Mrs. McMahon, who made this kind of furniture? Was this craftsman who did this? No, it was mostly the country people themselves just making the pieces that they needed at the time, functional pieces they needed for their homes. Is that the main characteristic of it then, that, that it was functional? Yes, this is, this is it. It's very plain. It's always very plain and simple. And uh, most of it was made in the New England states because this is where the pine was most prevalent. And then they packed it with them when they came west. That's right. When they came west, they brought it with them on the covered wagons. Were there other woods that were used for the country furniture? Well, yes. Now, the pieces you find here in the Midwest, uh, sometimes uh, the identical pieces that you would find in pine, and they're mostly made in walnut because walnut was most prevalent west of the Mississippi. Okay, let's start with this piece here. What is this one, and what was it used for? Well, it's a very simple old pine covered and I would say a kitchen cupboard. Is there anything unusual about its construction? Well, not really. It's like so many of them were constructed and um, has the simple little iron pulls and well, like most of the iron, uh, pine furniture, it's just uh, very simple. How about the glass, the window pane? Well, now these, some of these have been uh, replaced. I have had pieces that had the original glass in it, the old wavy glass, which is preferable for people that really want the, uh, the old pieces. But in this particular piece, some of the pieces have had to be replaced. How about <clears throat> the white knob there? Is that typical? Yes, that is. The porcelain um, knob is typical. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's a big cupboard. Mm -hmm. What's this next piece? Well, this is just a little pine chest of drawers. And it isn't all pine. The front is pine, and then there's some poplar wood in it. And this was uh, the way these things were made also. These uh, people that made the furniture, they used whatever wood they happened to have on hand. And so sometimes the old pine has some of the pieces of wood in it. Same way with a walnut or any. Uh, pieces of furniture that were handmade. They um, used a number of different kinds of wood in it very often. If you found a chest similar to this one in, say, your great aunt's attic and you wanted to make sure it really was old, what are some, some signs of wear, of age? Well, first you would look and see how it's made, uh, the dovetailing in the drawers, and the um, see if it was made by hand. You'd look... Uh, underneath the drawers to see the um, saw marks and um, of course the age of the wood and the wear in the various uh, areas. <clears throat> the wood um, uh, ages and gains a beautiful uh, patina through the years. New wood doesn't have any color and um, this is what uh, is most desirable in the uh, old furniture, the color of the wood. Okay. How about this pretty piece here? Well, this is a beautiful old um, corner cupboard. And uh, this is, uh, I think, one of the nicest pieces right now that I have in my shop. It's small, doesn't take a lot of room, and it's very attractive. It's in two pieces, the top, that can be removed from the lower part. Now, is that all pine? The, the insets all, here look uh, different. Well, no, I think this is all pine. This um, is really very nice. It's been restored. Uh, How much uh, changing of pieces can you do and still have an authentic antique? What can you change? Well, you really uh, can change uh, nothing as far as that goes, except, uh, I mean, the structure of the piece. Um, you can put new pulls, and that won't hurt the authenticity. Uh, it's desirable to have the original ones, but you can put new ones. And you can put very little new wood, or you, uh, you ruin, ruin the authenticity. It. Now, if you're restoring a piece and, and someone wants it just um, for the functional part, this is fine. 
But if you want to keep it as a valuable antique, you don't want to add a lot of new wood to it. Okay. How about these two pieces back here? <clears throat> Excuse me. Starting well, this uh, particular piece is a um, dough box, and someone, unfortunately, uh, cut the top in two and made a, a table out of it, I suppose, to use, and, and it's still very useful. But uh, originally, the top was all one piece, and uh, they just lifted it off, and this is where they put all the bread to uh, braise and all. And this little piece is, um, I don't know whether you can see this or not. Oh, I think so. It's a little um, monk's bench. It came out of a convent, and it's the type of things that the uh, monks carried around with them and would sit down. How about the piece up above there? Well, the piece up above is a little corner uh, piece, a uh, hanging cupboard. It's perhaps not as old. Uh, it was too well refinished. This is a mistake that a lot of people made is make is doing a little bit too much sanding on the on the old pieces. You want the, the marks and that's the right. You want all the marks and things. and things. Well certainly that's what adds character to them. If you uh, my husband used to say if you want a new piece of furniture go and buy it. <laughs> okay. Now we got to step over to the other side. Now what's this piece here? Well this is an old water bench. Um, they used it in various places to set their buckets of water on as they brought them in, you know to wash themselves and so forth. We enjoy the beauty of the simplicity of them, but I don't think they realized that there was a great deal of beauty involved. Were there chairs and things made for comfort besides, or is it just the function? Well, again? some of them uh, were made for comfort. Some of them you sit in, you <laughs> wonder. You <laughs> Why know. you did, huh? Yes, they're not particularly comfortable. But um, a lot of them are very comfortable. OK, well, let's move over to the table then. What kind is this one? Well, this is um, a pine table, again, a pine. And this is what we call the, uh, move this a little bit. If you notice the legs, it's what we call a country hepplewhite. And um, the legs are very simple and plain and straight. Now, you mentioned hepplewhite. Does this? Precede that or follow that or at the same well, time? Well, it's at the same time. Heppel white is an early period furniture. And uh, this is a country piece that they really just, well, they used all of this through. It isn't any particular period. It was just used all this time, all, all through this time. Are there other kinds of tables be besides the drop leaf that were used in the country? Oh, yes. There's the harvest table, which is a long table with very small drop leaves. And, um, well, various kinds of tables. They had a, well, a number of tables. I'm sorry, I don't have more uh, examples. But it wasn't you. just this one kind oh, no, then? No, no, no. Okay. There were a number of tables. What's the chest there? Well, this is um, called a linen press. And I don't know, uh, but. The inside has shelves in it for putting their linens in. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that can show up or not, but it's just like a tall cupboard, you might say, with the one drawer on top. There again, just a piece that, very that plain. was functional and very plain, just to use as they needed. Need now, it. these are all that we've seen natural color. Were any of them painted at this time? Yes, they were. Uh, most of these pieces have been restored. And a lot of the old pine was painted with the old brick red and was really very nice. But uh, except for the people that want real authenticity, um, they don't want to leave them. The paint on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. The paint is, uh, it, uh, most of the pieces you find that way have, have gained a, a beautiful old mellow, mellow tone to them. Uh, the paint was made with brick dust and um, buttermilk. Oh. And so, of course, it sunk into the soft wood and is very hard to get out. What's this next piece? Well, this uh, is called a pantry cupboard. And it's quite long. It would make a nice serving piece and has a lot of storage space in it. It's 
the cover the doors are double and fold back this way this is a nice um, it's a nice piece it's large and would serve nicely for storage as well as a serving piece okay the top how about the bowl here what is this one this is a burled bowl made from the, the uh, uh, not of a tree. It's very unusual and rare. <clears throat> They're not found very often. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a butter mold, which I I don't see often anymore either. This is a spoon that was used. This came from Norway, incidentally. Okay. We'll talk more tomorrow about country furniture and then get into the Walnut Victorian. See you then. Good afternoon. We're again visiting with Mrs. Margaret McMahon from the Pines Antique Shop west of Ames. We've been talking this week about antique furniture, but today we're in what Mrs. McMahon calls the odds and ends room. And this is made up of a variety of things, some old and some not so old, and we're going to show you a few of those things. Let's start with this cabinet. What are some of the things in this one? Maybe we can start with the bottom shelf. Well, we have a couple of uh, potato mashes there. And the tall wooden mm -hmm, the tall wooden things of the potato mashes, and then there's a cheese mold. And uh, insulators too on that shelf. Yes, <laughs> insulators, which uh, are very popular collector's items now. And um, we have an old uh, coffee pot. Just and this is an old type. uh huh pottery type coffee pot. And then there's um. Uh, rolling pin. I'm really quite low on, on uh, some of the old wooden things that people call primitives. They're really country country pieces. Now that rolling pin you mentioned on the top shelf there is, looks big. Were they it that is. big? It's quite large. Well, they were all sizes. This just happens to be a large one. It's really not as old as some of them are. What are these things on the third shelf with the holes in them and the handle? Uh, well, they're called... Um, um, ricers, ricers you say? that's yeah. right, <laughs> potato rice. Well, people use them to rice potatoes and also to make um, applesauce. Uh, my mother used to make applesauce in a mine and it squirted all over the place. <laughs> they're really not very good not for ideal, that. Huh? No, they're not, I don't think. This is a, this is a interesting uh, piece, I think, and can still be used. It's a cherry pitter. Cherries go in here and and come out without the pits. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, let's look at some of the things over to the left now. Start with the All table. All right. Well, this is a cherry table. It's a very old drop leaf table and has maple legs. Um, that's an Aladdin lamp, which is not the oldest lamp. It was one of uh, a newer lamp that came out to give more light. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're rather popular. Well, this is a, this is probably, could I bring it out, sure. turn it around some? Oh, uh, this goes with a toilet set. And uh, this is um, a very pretty one. Mm -hmm. It's a Copeland uh, set made in England. And there was a pitcher and a bowl and other pieces that went with it. How about some of the things you have behind here? Well, that, the irons, those two uh, large irons back there are charcoal irons. Mm -hmm. and one of them still has the charcoal in it. You can imagine uh, ironing clothes with those things. And then the next iron is um, just what they call a sad iron, which they put on a stove to heat. Up What's above, that? yeah. that's... Uh, no, what did I say that was? Something I sauerkraut. Had to, sauerkraut. Pattern. That's right. I had to learn to like sauerkraut. And I can't even remember it because I don't care for it. Really, these are mashes of various things. They used them uh, for corn and um, to make harmony. And I don't know what they used all those. But Different some purposes. of them, yes, uh huh. Some of them were um, 
used to put wagon wheels on. They're really more of a... Kind of like a hammer. Uh, yeah, then, uh -huh, huh? this type of thing. What's this one? That's a cranberry picker. That came from uh, the New England states. It's rather a crude one, I think. Uh, there's a salt box hanging up there that somebody painted. And above it, a match case uh, holders, which are not as old as some of the match holders are. And uh, then we have a, a lamp, a car lamp, a lamp mm -hmm. off of an old car. And then there's a plane, a wood plane there, and that's not as old either as um, some I've had. Another sauerkraut cutter. And about. another sauerkraut cutter, yes. These chairs are about 1900. The furniture in here is not as old as the furniture in the other room. I have mostly oak in here, which is around the turn of the century or, or in the teens and the 20s. But it's more popular now, it's too, isn't it? It's very popular now. The young people like it, and I can understand this because it's very durable and it's not as expensive. And um, and it's really very pretty when it's finished. I have two, well, I have this one chest, and then the next chest is ash, which is very similar to oak. But these are not, either one of them, very old. Well, no, they're about the turn of the century. And these have the lamps, too? Yes, these um, um, are lamps, the kerosene lamps, that now are very popular with young people. I notice they're using them a lot place of electricity. Then behind the chest, we have a variety of paintings. Well, these are pictures of various kinds. Some of them just old pictures that are interesting, and the old fruit print. Now we have a lantern. Now this is a lantern, like the farmers used on, uh, on the farm. And these are irons, too, Those are they? irons, yes. They are the newer irons. After the sad irons came these, and they um, had a uh, top, a handle that fit on them. There was one handle, and you put these on the stove, and then the, the handle would fit on all the irons, which was very nice. I, I don't have a handle now to show. I'm sorry. That's this one. That's a pony collar. These collars have become rather popular now, the horse collars, and this, is, this was a small one that was used on a pony. What's this one? That uh, goes in a bracket and uh, was to hold a, either a potted plant or you could put a lamp in it. And what's uh, the next the piece? The next one is an old iron um, uh, bread stick pan. And uh, this was rather interesting, I think. You could make um, bread sticks in it. Okay. Cornmeal, if you want it to. Now we want to go to the trunks. What's this first one? Uh, well, this trunk, of course, is not as old. It's not really, uh, uh, well, it's a chest, and it's a wicker, a wicker chest. And these were popular when wicker was popular in the 20s. And it's a rather cute thing. This is a flat top trunk, and uh, doesn't seem to be quite as popular as the camelback trunks. Um, but it is, a, it is an attractive trunk. And it's just, uh, these are quite old, of course, much older than the, than the wicker. Now, these are the camelbacks. These are this the one. camelbacks, the one with the, with the rounding top. And they've become quite sought after and are very attractive when they're fixed up. Uh, this one has a design on the top. Yes, is that unusual? Yes, it does. It does. Well, they're all, uh, so many of them are uh, a little different, you know. This design is very pretty when it's painted, as a lot of people do, and um, then they refinish the wood. Sometimes you'll find them already red uh, with the design on them. It's a tin like, and, mm -hmm. and it's very attractive. The one on the other side is an all um, leather trunk. It's extremely heavy, but very old and uh, interesting. It's the only all leather trunk I've ever had. And both of these are the yes, camelbacks. Yes, both of these are the camelbacks. And uh, the one there on that side is made of uh, leather. And um, it's a very thin leather, and it's deteriorating now. It could come off and be, you know, just have the wood finished. And then how about this flat well, one back this here? This is interesting. I just got this, and it's an old pine chest, and it's, it's called an immigrant chest. And it has the... Um, original sticker 
on the side that says immigrant, immigrant uh, chest on it. And it has the man's name on the front, the immigrant that used it, which Makes brought it, it over. Seem nicer, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. It's, it's, uh, I think it would be real pretty um, finished. It's, uh, it has the metal, which iron that surrounds it. Okay, well, let's move over this way then. All right. Now, what's this large piece here? Well, this is a very old chopping block, and they're really quite popular. This is a round one. So often the, the round ones are, are the hardest to get. You know, you see more square ones as a rule. What are some of these things lining the brick well, wall there? These are old um, iron skillets. And this is an iron um, pancake griddle. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a, these are canning jars, which now are very popular. And uh, this is a tool of some kind. These are just some of the many things that you'll find in the odds and ends room at the Pines Antique Shop. And Mrs. Margaret McMahon has been my guest. We'll see you next week. Good afternoon. We're again at the Pines Antique Shop west of Ames and we're visiting with Mrs. Margaret McMahon about antique furniture. Today we're talking again about Victorian furniture and again let's tell them the years that this was popular. Well this was popular from about 1845 to uh, 1900, Miss Buriet. And people are collecting this in this area quite a bit. Why is that? Yes. Well this is Victorian country. And uh, Iowa was settled during the Victorian era. And uh, this is walnut country where the walnut trees predominated. And so, and th this is what was used mostly in the Victorian furniture. So, this is why they like it. Okay. You have a lovely chair over here. And this is an example of is this early Victorian, middle, yeah. or late? This is late Victorian. I would say about. Um, Oh, 1885. How can you tell which of the three periods that a piece belongs to? Are there characteristics that... Well, yes, uh, there are. It's, a, it's the design that you go by. This is about the only way you have of telling. This is really a very lovely chair, though. It's, um, it's a little prettier than a lot of the late, later Victorian furniture, I think. Has this one been reupholstered? It looks yes, like it's new. Yes, it has. It's, it's all been newly reupholstered. It probably had a horsehair or maybe a leather on it to begin with. Is this pattern, though, that they've chosen to do it over in uh, a typical one of the period? Well, it, uh, I, I don't know. I think it was probably just one that uh, this they particular like. woman liked. I thought maybe yes, the floral so design was a common one. Well, they one. did use floral design a lot. I, I don't think they used the cut velvet a great deal, however. They did use an antique, what they call an antique velvet, but um, it, it wasn't just like this. The arms on this one are so pretty. They're kind of a mm -hmm. flowing. Is that a common thing, the rounded uh, uh, curvy? Yes, it really is. Uh, it really is. This is just a, a typical piece. It is a little nicer, though, as I say, than the... It's not the latest, what we call the latest Victorian. It's a little earlier. And um, the carving on it, I would say, uh, uh, would be hand done. Where most of the late Victorian is um, machine. But this is probably mm -hmm. hand. Yeah. Okay, how about the chest next to the chair? Well, the chest, again, is... Um, is a rather early piece. It's plainer than a lot of uh, a lot of the Victorian furniture, and uh, some people don't like it plain. I I do myself. Is this but walnut too? It's all walnut. Mm-hmm. It has the plain coals on it, where so many of the uh, 
of the early pizzas had the hand carved pulls. Are these pulls machine made or, or hand done? Well, I uh, would say that they are machine made. They were, um, in this fact, is a the later... whole piece could, could have been machine made. Uh, would you like to see the ends of the yes, drawers? Yes, yes. What's unusual about them? Well, they are a little different. They're not dovetailed. They, these are pegged in, which means that um, it is a nice early piece, but it's, it came along in the machine era when they were machine making it. But this is an early Victorian piece? But it's an early piece. Well, I would say it could be um, 1880, 1885 in that period. Okay. How about the next one that you're standing by? Well, excuse me. <laughs> uh, this is a rather elaborate piece. This is an early Victorian piece with an extra lot of carving on it. And the handle's a little different from, <laughs> they're really rather unique, I think. Uh -huh. They're all hand carved. And this has the small, uh, piece of marble in the center, and is rather typical of uh, this particular period. These pulls on here are new ones. This had a, just a key hole in here, as so many of these small drawers, in fact, all the drawers in the furniture in this uh, era uh, were, uh, were to be locked. Everybody locked their everything drawers. Uh -huh, they locked everything up in those days. The women carried around a, bunch of keys so they could um, open their drawers. Now you mentioned the marble. Was this a common thing to use marble in the yes, Victorian period? It was quite common. Mm -hmm. And this piece has veneer, it looks like, on it. Yes, it has the veneer and this was, uh, um, this was typical too as a decorative thing. There's quite mm -hmm. a bit of difference between this piece and the one we just saw. Mm -hmm. That's both true. are Victorian, but... Well, both are Victorian, but this is perhaps a little earlier and uh, is certainly a little fancier piece. And I'm sure it was made uh, by hand where the other one was not. Now, the two little drawer sections on the top, what were those used for? They call them handkerchief drawers. They're very handy for a number of things, you know, but they call them handkerchief drawers. People used handkerchiefs more then than they do now. And they put lamps on the top? Yes, this is our anything you want to, really. You didn't uh, have a specific purpose the, then, huh? Just anything you wanted to put on the top. I imagine lamps were used on them a great deal since okay. that was their way well, of lighting. Well, let's move to the next one then. Now, is this piece early, middle, or late? Well, this piece, I would say, is early. And it's a beautiful um, old piece that was handmade, all handmade. The pulls on it are the fruit pulls, and they are handmade. And um, the ends are a one solid piece of walnut, which is, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely piece, very handsome old chest. Now, the fruit was a common motif, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was. And um, you can look at these and see that they're all uh, hand carved. How rare are pieces like this? How hard to find. Well, now they don't come along very often, just like everything else is antique now. Most of these um, lovely, really old pieces um, have been pretty well picked up. But they do show up occasionally, just like this piece. This had been in storage for a long time, and um, I was delighted to get it. Okay. How about the next one? Now, this is kind of similar to the first one we saw, yeah. very plain. Yes, this is. This is much plainer. If you will notice, is a much um, lighter walnut than this one. A walnut uh, comes in about three different colors or more shades, I would say. And uh, this whole chest is really much lighter than this. This is the, I suppose, what would be the black walnut. It depends a lot on where the trees uh, grow found. As, uh, also as to the color. Um, this is a plainer chest. Again, it has the two small drawers um, on the top as well as at the top of the chest. And it's very nice, but it's a much plainer chest than this one. The handkerchief drawers have an interesting wood on the front. Yes, those handkerchief drawers are very pretty. They, they have been um, 
uh, have the burled walnut on the front of them and uh, were perhaps not the original handkerchief drawers on this particular chest because this burled wood is not shown anywhere else in the chest. But they're very pretty and um, the period is the same. So they go all right. I noticed this one on the left here has marks on it. Now, you don't make any attempt to remove those, do you, the dance no, or anything? No, no, one shouldn't. That goes along with building character for the antique, you know. If you remove all of that, you just as well have a new piece. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next one. Well, now, the next piece is a little unusual. Uh, at least it is to me. It's a marble top um, piece for the dining room. And I think is rather unique and pretty, and it has the burled walnut on the front. And this is interesting up here. Now, it may have at one time had doors on this part, mm -hmm. and they have since been taken off, and uh, it was the way it is now when I got it. But uh, with the exception of that, I think it's all original. But I am inclined to feel that there may have been doors on this area in here. Mm -hmm. I think it is really just as attractive without them. Now, this one's walnut, too? This is all walnut. Yes, it is. This it's is a something doll. a little different from mm -hmm. the other ones. What's mm -hmm. that? Well, I don't know that that's anything particularly it, it, different, except it's a, it's a turned piece that they made as a decorative thing. Was that a machine done? Yes, thing? I'm sure it was all machine done. We'll be back at the Pines tomorrow. See you then.